Hey guys and welcome back to another Duveri Max Out episode. Today we are going to be maxing out our Oberon, which is something that someone asked me to do a long while ago. It kind of slipped off my radar a bit. But since the last week's Necros build with Smite was so powerful, I kind of jumped straight onto Oberon to see how well we could do with him. And hopefully we can come up with a build that... <laughs> justifies using Oberon. Not all the people use Oberon anymore. There was a time when his abilities could be used to great effect in a number of scenarios, but he's kind of fallen off the radar of a lot of players now, so hopefully after today he will be back in use a bit. We'll see. But yeah, we are going to be building Force Might, uh, as you've seen. We also have a few other abilities on here which I am hoping are going to be quite useful. Um, Hallowed Ground definitely is a great crowd control device, providing you know, radiation status to targets in the area and causing them to fight each other. It's actually a very good way to crowd control. Renewal, obviously providing us with some sustain. And our fourth ability gives us some armor reduction. However, it is not a whole lot and it's a very costly armor reduction, unlike, you know, Necros' Terrify, for example, which could just strip armor instantly for a fraction of the energy cost. So that's something to bear in mind when we do this. This is probably the ability that we're going to be subbing out as, to be honest, it's really not going to do us much good after a while, so yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can do with this. Um, in terms of weaponry, we've gone with the Kuva Tonko. We have two more weapons, both Kuva and Tenet, that we need to max out still. So once they're done, we can then move on to some more interesting primaries, and that'll be nice. But yeah, Kuva Tonko for this episode. We then also have the Piranha Prime. I was going to do the Bronco Prime with the Incarnon Adapter for this episode, but... Unfortunately, I realized I don't have a normal Bronco Prime, I just have the Ak Bronco Prime, which I obviously built two normals into. So yeah, we're going with the Piranha Prime this episode. I have actually seen this weapon come up loads for me. I've noticed certain weapons pop up a lot more than others. I don't know if that's um, just by design, whether they're, you know, skewed in that direction or not. But yeah, the Piranha Prime is one that I seem to get quite a lot of the time. So we're rolling with that today. And then we're going to do the Cybear in Kanon as well for our melee, which should be interesting as well. So, without further ado, guys, let's get these maxed out and see what kind of build we come up with. All right, guys, so our build is ready here, and I've gone a bit more conservative than I usually would on my Oberon, only using two former. I could have formed Cunning Drift and put on Growing Power instead, which is what I had intended to do to begin with. But to be honest, after I started building this, I figured that growing power wouldn't actually make all that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things, since we are building solely for that armor decree that comes up that's going to be able to boost our armor pretty drastically. So that's the reason I've left that off and I've managed to conserve some former here. The only one thing that I might change about this build after testing it out a bit is Alga Secrets. I may end up swapping that out for Hallowed Eruption since that will double the duration of our second ability, Hallowed Ground, which is basically what this build is actually based around, that and Smite. So yeah, both of these combined, the Hallowed Ground is hopefully going to be inflicting status procs against enemies and making them fight each other instead of me. I'm not intending for it to do any damage, just crowd control. Smite, obviously, we saw last week, this does insane damage throughout, and having that additional range and duration is going to help us, you know, basically just annihilate enemies across the map and once we get the armor decrees on this we will get about 20 to 30 orbs firing off in all different directions that are going to deal a lot of damage. We've also got smite infusion on so that we can give ourselves an additional radiation damage boost on our weapons. Alga secrets I've got on here basically because I want to see how well the 40% energy like conversion to shield works out on this since we're going to be spamming abilities a lot and I have also ended up putting um Oh, Chroma's third ability is, um, I can't remember what it's called now and I can't see it because it's gone off at the top, Elemental Ward. Um, I put this on because I want to make use of, again, the armor on this, so we're going to be increasing our armor quite significantly using this ability. And yeah, that combined again with that Decree is going to be pretty insane, I think, and then Guardian for even more armor. And then Energize just to keep our energy pool up nice and high. So I'm hoping all of this is going to culminate in quite a tanky, but also strength heavy build when we actually come to get our decrees. In terms of our Kuva Tonkor, I do actually have a ribbon for this. So I've got the uh, plus crit damage, plus crit chance, negative zoom ribbon. I, I did roll this ribbon. I'm sad I didn't actually get it on camera, but I did manage to roll this whilst kind of gathering this up. Uh, we want radiation on here yeah so unfortunately when i um farmed up this kuva tonko i got it with just impact i think or something similar to that i can't remember what it was now 
uh, which basically means that, yeah, there was no kind of element that I could work with. So this is just a straightforward build I've got on here. Um, and yeah, geared towards crit chance, crit damage. You can see here 144.4% crit chance with an 8.6 times multiplier although the radial attack uh, obviously has a 70 percent fall off but it has very decent range on the tonkor so nothing too shabby there this is actually going to be a pretty good build i hope and then piranha prime we have gone with multi-shot status crit mix and yeah steady hands on the extra slot very important for piranha as it kicks a lot like a lot a lot so you know considering the fire rate on this thing this is probably quite necessary to be honest Everything else here, we've got Galvanized Shot for increased damage per status type. And considering we've got 27 projectiles, each with an 8.6% status chance, we should start inflicting those every single shot, which is nice. Hence, I've got Jolt on here and I've not used uh, another Elemental mod, but I have used Prime Heated Charge for the massive increased damage. So that's nice. And then on our Cybear here, we'll take a look at the Incarnon upgrades in a second, but this is more of a status build than I would usually go with, and I've actually used Shattering Impact. The Cybear does come with a depolarity right here, Vazarin. So I've made use of it, and I have put Shattering Impact on. I'm going to see how it pans out, but I'm hoping that it does actually pair quite well with Weeping Wounds, because after a while, we'll start inflicting quite a few impact procs, and hopefully we can strip the armor of enemies fairly quickly and therefore you know make this weapon last a bit longer in game everything else geared towards you know status attack speed condition overload for you know more status damage basically and then we got primed reach obviously it's a it's a long a long boy so we're going to be hitting things from a long way away so yeah that's the build we've gone for again radiation and cold which is going to help us out with the fourth incarnate upgrade we have here which is going to be on killing enemies with three plus cold stacks we'll gain plus 15 initial combo for 10 seconds which stacks up to four times now i'm hoping this is going to mean that i can heavy attack quite frequently with this weapon uh, and basically yeah just kind of run around heavy attacking with it but we'll see how it pans out in the end i'm not really sure everything else we've got combo duration on here increased damage by 20 uh, and 10 additional combo on targets affected by cold status again we do have cold on the weapon so i'm hoping this will pan out just fine uh, and then yeah the usual uh, level one incarnate upgrade right there so yeah that's the build guide now we need to go ahead and sort out the fashion frame so i'll catch you guys in a second okay guys here is our oberon i'm fairly happy with how this one turned out but i might tweak him a bit in the future we will have to see so yeah in terms of the skin we have gone with the yukai set so we've got the skin and helmet on here and then the attachments we've also got the yukai armor on since it fits pretty well with the theme targus prime greaves and also the alastorn chest plate to provide that little dangling effect and then i have put our usual uh, portal sigil behind that in order to give it a bit of animation and then, yeah, the target screws I am minded to change. I couldn't get the color to fit just right with the uh, the skin, so they'll probably be going at some point. But for now, I'm just going to leave them. I am running out of time, so yeah, we've got to get on with things. Cyandana-wise, we have gone with the Seraphim Cyandana. Again, I'm probably going to change the color pattern on this, or even just the Cyandana itself. I was tempted to go with the Dominus Cyandana, because I think that fits quite well with kind of the, you know, antlers. But yeah, I think we've used that quite a lot now, so I fancied a change, and this one seemed, yeah, pretty good, so that's what we're rolling with for now. But that is the uh, the fashion frame, guys. We'll uh, hop into the simulacrum now and test out our weapons. Alright guys, so once again we are going to try our weapons out against the level 195 Corrupted Heavy Gunners and see how it fares. So first of all, our Tonkor. Again, it's a AoE weapon, so I'm not expecting it to do a whole lot here. Let's see if we put on our first ability. Yeah, the armor value providing a bit of a challenge. If we were to strip the armor... Yes, stuff does die very quickly, it, it must be said. Um, but yeah, armor on steel path enemies will provide AoE weapons with a bit of a problem. Let's try out our Piranha Prime. Again, not a whole lot going on here. Let's strip. There we go. And lastly, our Cyber. So let's actually uh, try this and just keep the armor on for now. I'm worried I'm going to knock all the enemies off the map, so bear with. 
So we'll get ourselves to uh, incarnate mode here. <laughs> yeah. So I was kind of hoping that some more armor will be getting shredded here, but I guess my attack speed isn't up yet. I need to get my uh, combo counter up nice and high as well. So how long does it actually take, I guess, with the Shattering Impact to shred the armor? I'm going to knock him off before this is over. But it's taking a while. So maybe we'll sub that out. I was kind of hoping it would be a bit quicker. And I guess maybe once we've got a kill and procced our Berserker Fury, it might go a bit faster. But yeah, for the most part, it's uh, probably not as much as I had hoped. Well, the slash damage actually does quite a bit. We might be able to build four slash in this instance, we'll see. But yeah, those are the weapons, guys. And again, they will be much, much, much better when we come to do the uh, Steel Path circuits because obviously we'll have the decrees to give us our hand. So yeah, let's hop in now, guys. See if we can get our Oberon. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay, guys. So this is our second rotation right here of survival. Uh, I've already done two rotations of excavation and defense as well. And yeah, so far this feels pretty good i'm gonna lie uh let me just see oh inflicting cold or toxin yeah let's go with that maybe yeah i'm down with that uh so if we kind of just demonstrate here similar vibe to our necros oh dear i didn't get my my stuff down in time apparently there we go um so yeah you can see everything is very slowed with our elemental war due to them taking like 10 cold stacks instantly after shooting me due to my 500 percent strength which is quite nice. But that isn't even the main kind of um, CCing element to this. You can see they're all taking radiation damage, which is good. Uh, and so they're all going to be just attacking each other, uh, which is just perfect. And similar to our Necros, I can just spam my smite here. I probably should do that a bit more. And there are just orbs galore flying around, dealing loads of damage. Uh, but it is it is squishy the neck it's more dangerous than necros obviously i don't have the same damage reduction that i had on the necros the elemental ward does help giving us that armor boost but it's not a you know a flat multiplicative 90 percent damage like reduction as we had on necros's shield of shadows um but it does keep me alive for the most part you know and if enemies are shooting each other and not me then i will stay alive longer as well which is nice but you know, we're up at level a thousand now and i'm still generally speaking able to kind of just run around how i want not many enemies are causing me hassle the synth is also very very good i found so yeah as long as we keep our abilities active we're pretty set, although I should uh, have been talking a bit. I haven't really been trying to get kills right now, which is a bit silly. Let's go ahead and just activate one of these guys. We'll probably have to activate both this time around, but hey-ho. My Phoenix Renewal also ensures that my HP basically stays at maximum the whole time. I do need to be a bit careful about my uh, energy pool, though. But to be honest, I haven't found any energy orbs in a while here. I wonder if this guy's going to drop one. Maybe he did, but no energize, unfortunately. Let's see about this guy. Nope, no energize. <laughs> oh dear. Got to make sure I keep my uh, tanky abilities active as well. Ah. Nope, no energize. Wow, pretty unlucky. You should get more lucky with energize. Interesting. I'll activate that though. So yeah, I've actually done two rotations of defense and excavation already. Excavation, this guy is insanely bad because enemies don't even come close to the points. They get red propped and then yeah, they just kill each other. They don't even bother you, so it's perfect for that. You do have to be aware of the Thrax guys, however, as with most of these builds we've done. But yeah. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this guy, so not going to lie. Again, my HP staying at full. And if, I, if my weapons aren't doing any damage, then I can just run around and use Smite, so it's not weapon dependent. 
You can see kind of people just dying all over the place around the map. The extra range on this actually has proven to be a bit nice. Maybe I'll add some range to my Necros. But yeah, like I'm, I'm very rarely having to use my Operator to escape like lethal damage. I think that's the main thing. Like, if you want a comfortable frame, this is another one that's kind of in that in that region. So it's not as good as Necros, you know. I, I do go down more, and I have gone down once or twice. But at the same time, you know, you can see with the 500% ability strength, I am just, yeah, basically continually healing to healing to maximum with my uh, my third ability. Lovely stuff. More uh, more efficiency. So yeah, I'm gonna carry on, guys. You've already seen me use Smite on these on these legs uh, last week, so I won't bore you with another assassination mission because that's basically all I'm gonna be doing. Um, but yeah, we'll have a regroup in the orbiter and then we will round out the video. All right, guys. So our Oberon there causing absolute havoc around the map. He isn't, I would say, as strong as our Necros was last week, particularly just due to the fact that he is way squishier. And also the distractions that he causes through radiation are not as good or as potent as your shadows are on Necros. You know, the enemies will target you more easily than they would your shadows on necro so bear that in mind you know when you're getting to level 1500 2000 enemies on the map they will be able to one shot you and they will one shot you a lot more than you would want even with them all shooting each other still you know it might turn things into a free-for-all but you're still part of that free-for-all nothing's going to draw fire for you so it is worth noting the only thing that the uh, the radiation is very good at doing is defending you know, they, they tend to stray away from hitting the objectives, I would say, especially in excavation. So he is really good for excavation on Steel Path Circuit, especially. So do bear that in mind, you know, he's not a total write-off in that in that instance in terms of distractions and, and defense. And obviously the smite factor with that 500% ability strength from our armor was just insane. Now, obviously we had our fourth ability as well being Elemental Ward from Chroma. You could probably sub that out, to be honest. Towards the end, it was getting close to being not very useful, obviously. Like I said, you're still getting one shot by everything. If you if you just base your tankiness off of armor and nothing else, perhaps you could put something like Adaptation on, maybe? But if you have nothing else on, then, yeah, you are going to get one shot a lot. But yeah, otherwise, guys, Oberon, a pretty damn good frame. And I am going to be playing around with more of his builds, particularly, perhaps, for Disruption because that still works, I believe. We'll have to have a look at it. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it'll still work. Um, but yeah, otherwise, guys, once again, if you have any suggestions for frames that you want to see in the future, bear in mind we are starting with primed frames only. Do leave those down in the comments below. Otherwise, guys, if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one.